Happy Monday. Welcome to class. Today is Monday, May the 4th. In phonics, we're going to be focusing on adding a sound to a word to make a different word. So let's take a look at some examples. The first one we have the word up. And it is this word right here. When we add the k, k sound to the word up, we have a new word and that word is cup. Our second example is the word an. An. When I add the sound mmm, that's the letter M, correct? So it is the word man. The third word is the word it. So let's add the word, the sound sit. Sit is the new word that we make. This is the word nap. So let's add the sound, which is the S, right? So that would be snap. And our last example is the word lap, lap. So if we add the sound k, 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 we have the word k, 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 clap. So that's what we're going to be focusing on this week, okay, and for phonics. So today for reading, of course, it is Monday. And we, on Mondays, we have Mystery Reader Monday. So let's see if we could guess who is reading to you as you listen to the book. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to read the story, The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors by Drew Daywalt. Long ago, in an ancient and distant realm called the Kingdom of Bag Garden, there lived a warrior named Rock. Rock was the strongest in all the land, but he was sad because no one could give him a worthy challenge. Rock traveled to the mysterious forest over by the tire swing where he met a warrior who hung on a rope holding a giant's underwear. Drop that underwear and battle me, you ridiculous wooden clip man. I will pinch you and make you cry, Rock Warrior. Rock versus Clothespin. Rock is victorious. Even though he had won, Rock was still unsatisfied. So he journeyed on to the mystical tower of Grandma's favorite apricot tree. There, he was met by an odd and delicious fruit. You, sir, look like a f fuzzy little butt. What? I challenge you to a duel. Then let us battle. Rock versus apricot. I will beat you, Rock, with my tart and tangy sweetness. Rock is victorious. Uh, I'm smushed. And yet smushing you has brought me no joy. Are you not entertained? They were entertained, but the battle had been too easy. So Rock left the backyard, the kingdom of back, gar back garden. 
Meanwhile, in the Emperor of Mom's study, on a lonely windswept desk mountain, a second great warrior sought the glory of battle, and his name was Paper. Even though he was the clever, cleverest warrior in the land, he was also sad because no one could outwit him. He set out his across Desk Mountain to find his match. There he met a large and square monster. I gobble up the likes of you and spit them out every day, little paper. Oh, then taste my furry giant box monster. Paper versus computer printer. No, not a paper jam. Paper is victorious. Having beaten the fiercest fighter of Desk Mountain, Paper climbed down the pit of the office rubbish bin where he battled the most terrifying, horrid creature in all the land. The half-eaten bag of trail mix. Paper versus half-eating bag of trail mix. Ah, foul wizard! He blotted out the sun! Run for your lives, laddies! Paper wins again. Can no one beat me? And so, with a heavy heart, Paper departed the Empire's of Mom's study at the same time in the kitchen realm in a tiny village of drunk drawer there lived a third great warrior they called her scissors and she was the fastest blade in all the land she too was unchallenged on this day her first opponent was let us do battle, you tacky, vaguely round monstrosity. I will batter you and leave you beaten with confused with my ahasive and tangling powers. Scissor versus roll of tape. Scissors is victorious. Scissors forged on the kitchen, across the kitchen realm to the fridge waste of refrigerator freezer. There she met her most fearsome adversaries yet. I have come from the far reaches of kitchens to battle you, O oh bizarre and yummy breaded dinosaur. Bow before our child-pleasing shapes and flares, you flavors, you sword monster. No one can resist our crunchy awesomeness. Scissors versus dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets. Dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets win? No, wait. No, they don't. Scissors is victorious again. I am so good that not even dinosaur chicken nuggets can keep beat me. And so, scissors like rock and paper before her traveled beyond her own kingdom, singing out a challenger who was her equal. Then one day, in the great cavern of Tukar Garage, rock and scissors came face to face. I hope you're wearing your battle pants, rock warrior. If by battle pants you mean no pants, but I'm willing to fight you, then yes. Yes, I'm wearing my battle pants, weird scissory one. Rock versus scissors.
an epic and legendary battle ensued, but ultimately, Rock is victorious. You have made me so happy by beating me. I wish I felt your joy, scissors, for I have yet to meet a warrior who can beat me. Hi there! Those are fighting words! What, wait, what? Rock versus paper. Paper cover rock. This is the best day of my life. Thank you for winning, oh great knight of paper. That's fine for you, but it looks as though no one will ever beat me. Not so fast, paper. Wait, what? Scissors versus paper. You beat me. And the three great warriors hugged each other and danced for joy as they became best friends. Finally, they had each, they had each met their matches. They were so happy, in fact, that they began to battle again. Round and round they went in the most massive and epic three-way battle of all time. That is, and that is said that this joyous struggle still ranges on to this very day. That is why children around the world in the backyards, on playgrounds, and yes, even classrooms, still honor the three great warriors by plane. Rock, paper, scissors. The end. Hope you enjoyed. Hi, KA. I hope you enjoyed my read aloud. Did you all guess it was me? I am Ms. Cantu's friend, and I'm also a teacher at Harmony. My name is Ms. Barajas. I have a few of you as students. Um, I was so excited when Ms. Cantu asked me to be your mystery reader of the week. I hope I can do it again. Miss you guys. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the book. So when you see Ms. Barajas, make sure that you thank her and she was very excited to read to you. So when we go back to school, make sure to do that, okay? So today I decided we would practice some of our writing, even though you guys have been writing um, with certain of with certain activities. We're still gonna we're gonna do a little bit of an activity that we've done in class before. So let's start by reading the directions. Make a sentence using the picture. Use the checklist below to check your work. Okay, so the first one is capital letter. Every sentence needs to start with a capital letter. Finger spacing, you need to make sure that you provide plenty of space between words. And every sentence needs to end with a punctuation, a period, an exclamation mark, a question mark, okay? So we're gonna use this picture right here to make a sentence. Now, just by looking at the picture, you could kind of tell that this is a boy and the boy is holding a kite, okay? So I want you to take a look at my sentence. This is my sentence. Of course, you're not gonna use the same sentence as I do, okay? My little brother likes to fly his kite. Do I have a capital letter? 
So this is how I want you to do it after you write your sentence. Do I have a capital letter? Yes, this is an uppercase M. So I get to check mark this. Do I have spacing between my words? Did I leave enough space or are all my words together? Space, space, space. Okay, so I did. So I get to check mark finger space. And the last one is what? Punctuation. Do I end my sentence with a period? Yes, I do. So I get to check mark punctuation also. So it's super simple, um, but I do not want you guys to check mark everything until you're done writing the sentence. So you're gonna write the sentence first, then you're gonna go back and use your checklist down here to make sure that you did it correctly. And this is the activity that's gonna be waiting for you on Seesaw. So you could pause the video and resume it once you're done and you're ready for math. Welcome to math. And we're still gonna be focusing on counting and combining coins. So here we have, um, and you guys know these activities because we have had plenty of them. So as always, I tell you guys to start off with counting the larger coins, right? So we are going to start off with, remember, this small coin is 10 cents. So we have three dimes. So we're going to do, we have three. So we have to count by tens three times. So it's 10, 20, 30. And we have two nickels. There are five pennies in one nickel. So we do, we count by fives two times. So if we're count, we're here counting by tens and 30, you're gonna come down here and start with fives two times, right? Because you have two nickels, so it's 30, 35, 40. So you have 40 cents with the silver coins. So then we count our pennies. We have two pennies. So right now you're at 40 cents, so we're gonna count by ones two times, 40, 41, 42. So what is our total? 42 cents, good job. All right, let's move on to our next one, okay? So we have a quarter, which is 25 cents. So I'm gonna use here, let me use this one, counting by fives. So we're 25, okay? And then we need to count, we have one dime, which is this one right here. So we need to count by tens um, one time. So if we have 25, we can also count by fives because there are two nickels in a dime, okay? So we're here, 25, 30, 35, so we've counted the dime, the quarter. Now we count by fives three times because we're gonna count the nickel, so we are here. So we're now at 40, 45, 50, okay? And now the copper colored coins are the pennies, so we're gonna count by ones. So we have 50. 51, 52. So our total is 52 cents. Okay. And then 
we are going to complete the last one. We're going to first always count from the bigger coin. So we have a quarter, 25 cents. And then one dime. So we're going to count the dime. So it's 25, 30, 30, 35. Then five cents and five cents. 40, 40, oh, 45. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This thing. So we're at 35, 40, 45. So we counted our nickels. And now we have our coin, our um, pennies to count. So we're at 45. We need to count by ones three times. So 45, 46, 47, 48. So we have 48 cents there, okay? Um, if you, I forgot to mention to get your coins uh, to do this, but, um, so I apologize for that. But also, if you want, when you're counting coins to use a number line or something that's gonna help you so it makes a little bit more sense, I would suggest doing that also, okay? So this is the activity that's gonna be waiting for you at, in Seesaw and you can complete that. Of course, you can get your coins. If not, you can use these coins, okay? And this is our social studies lesson for the week. This lesson does go along with money because we're gonna be talking about jobs and jobs in our community, jobs outside of our community, all kinds of jobs, um, and of course, when you work, when you have a job, you get paid to do that job, okay? So let's go over the reading for the week. Many people work. What jobs do people do? Many workers use tools. Many workers wear special clothes. Parents take care of the family and home. Mechanics fix cars and trucks. Cafeteria workers serve lunches at school. Salespeople help you buy things. Police help keep people safe in the community. Jobs are valuable. People get paid to work. They use the money to buy things they need and what? So this was the reading for social studies. Okay, um, we're gonna have a different assignment as we as we continue social studies this week. But I wanted to first start off um, so that you could get to know what the unit's gonna be about with the readings, and it's gonna be about jobs. Now there's jobs that people do like um, that are very important, like mommies or daddies that maybe stay home and help with the take care of the house they don't get paid for those jobs but those are also very important jobs okay so this is the lesson for today and enjoy the rest of your day and again happy monday